Thank you. Good morning. I was there listening to the wonderful speakers. All they ta- all the things they talk about reminds me in the past 18 years. 18 years ago, in my apartment, I told the 18 founders that one day we will build up a site. That site will be the top 10 sites of the world, and we will build up a company that can last 102 years. And people say, why 102 years? Because our company was born in 1999. Last year, we had one year. This century, we finished 100 years, and next century, we have one year. 102 means cross three centuries. When every goal you give to your team should be very accurate. If you say, ah, this company is going to last 100 years, so nobody take it seriously because every company say, we want to last 100 years. So the number you give the team should be very accurate. We took the video when I talked to the 18 founders. And today when I watch the video, a lot of people say, well, since we don't have anything to do, when you see 102 years, a big 10 sites, let's just do it. Very few people believe that we will make it happen because we don't have a high resumes, right? I graduated from Hanzo Teachers College and most of my colleagues and 18 founders, they were my students, my friends. They are, none of them are very successful. Among the 18 people, there are only three people who know something about computer. The rest of 15 people know nothing about computer, nothing about the internet. We had no money, 18 people gathered $50,000, and we had no relationship. None of us from rich family or powerful family with a government office background. We don't have great talents. But I told the team that, guys, if we can be successful, 80% of the young people in the world can be successful. Because at that time, China had no the internet was so backward. Nobody believed e-commerce in China. Nobody believed internet. People say China will not develop internet. And China will not have e-commerce because you don't have a credit card system. You don't have logistics. You don't have this. You don't have that. But I think someday China will have. If we start to do it now, if we prepare for 10, 15 years, the day that e-commerce in China were booming. So that was, the, um, that was the thinking at the beginning. And 30 years ago, I was considered, I mean, in my early 30 years, I was considered to be a, a loser. Um, I remember that, you know, I applied university for three times, all failed. And I, after uni- the first year when I finished university of high school, Field in examination for university, I went apply for a job in a police station. Five classmates, we went there, four of them accepted, and I was re- rejected. And one of them, one of the four who were rejected, today he's my chief staff. He's been working in the, uh, in the, uh, in the police for 20 years. He's an excellent policeman, but when we talk about this, he always say, well, the day when we apply for, the, for the, being a policeman, you are rejected. They feel very proud. But they say, hey, Jack, you know, you don't have a chance. And the second thing I remember very well, your Hangzhou, the first four-star hotel in my city was built. My cousin and I waited for two hours and a half in a very hot summer in order to apply a job being a hotel waiter. After interview, uh, my score was much better than my cousin. After interview, my cousin was accepted and I was rejected. Reason is he was taller and more handsome. <laughs> 30 years later, today, he is still working in that hotel in a laundry room. And I changed my life. <laughs> and the other thing is that it's true. 24 of my friends, we went for applied job in a, in a KFC. 
And 23 accepted. I was the only guy rejected. I don't know why, but they say, you know, you don't have it. So I thought maybe the God said you should do things yourself. Because I get used to be rejected. Even to today, most of the times when we fail, when we do not achieve something, I say, well, get used to it. We are the people have to learn. We get used to be rejected. We get used to the days nobody come to help us, support us. We should not get used to be successful. When we succeed on something, we always feel very proud and honored and thankful. Even to 1999. Joe and I, our CFO, our vice chairman, and I, we took him to Silicon Valley, and asked for venture capitalist support. We were rejected by more than 30 venture capitalists. People even did not want to listen to we talk. They say, "Hey, you 18 guys, none of you guys have a high resumes. None of you guys, you know, Joe is he graduated from Yale, but the other 18 guys." We don't have any background, and the story we are telling be the top ten websites want to make a com- company last a hundred two years, and will be doing e-commerce in China. People say this guy is crazy, but we started with the fifty thousand U.S. dollars, and then I think two years later, Harvard came. They want to write a case study. They spend one week write a long. Story. You know, case study and talk to me. Say, Jack, this is your company. I read a case study. Say, no, this is not my company. This is not what we want to do. He said, this is what. This is your company. You just did not realize that. So, I say, okay, then that is my company. And the next six years, they put the case study in many universities in Beijing to study that. They always put Alibaba and our competitors together every time. I was invited, sitting at the back of the classroom, listen to the people talking about my company. For six years, every time they say Alibaba will die, that competitor will win. And six years later, all the competitors die. We're still surviving. <laughs> the reason we do that not because we're expert of internet, not because. We are smart. We are not smart people, but we are very optimistic. We believe in the future. We believe in internet, and we believe that if we do not succeed, somebody will. And we know that we have to be humble. We have to serve our customers. The investors may not like us. If the customers like us, we have the futures. Right. Most of the company die not because they don't have money, because they have too much money, and we don't have a plan. You know, I, I understand a lot of venture capital say, Jack, what is your business plan? I say, I don't have a business plan. So how can I give you money if you don't have business plan? And my answer is, how can you giving you business plan of internet e-commerce in 1999? The only thing is, how can using internet to support the To support the customers and understand the customers, make the customers successful. We know only our customers su- su- succeed. We will be successful. So, this is how we did it. And I, I,、uh, I really am very thankful for America. 1995, I went to Seattle, discovered the internet. And year 2001, 2002, when the internet almost bu- bubble bursted. I was happened to be in Seattle again, in my home, in my friend's home. I watched a wonderful movie called Forrest Gump. <laughs> I like the sentence. It reminds me every every time when I have a problem, I tell myself, "This is what Forrest Gump said." He said, "Life is like a box of chocolate. You never know what you're gonna get." And I find the Forrest Gump made a fortune by catching shrimps. Not catching whales, so helping small business will make me like a Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump just to keep on running, be simple, serve the people. That was what I learned. And also, I think the very important is after so many years, I learn. I keep on telling myself, I want. Yesterday I told you, and today I want to tell you again. As an entrepreneur, believe. Every day is difficult. Today is very difficult. 
tomorrow is much more difficult. But believe in the day of tomorrow. That day is very beautiful. But most people die tomorrow evening. If you don't work hard, you don't see the sunshine. And people say, "How could you inspire people when days are so bad?" We hire people who are very self-motivated. Don't hire people who are very sort of complaining. As a leader, you should never complain. If you complain, nobody will follow you. Nobody love to follow a leader who complain a lot. And we have to be optimistic. I'm lucky enough to see to meet so many great business leaders in the world. I find all of them they are very optimistic. I find all of them never complain, and they, I find all of them want to making sure that their team are better. Eighteen years later, now from eighteen founders, now we got more than fifty thousand people. And from my apartment, we got a lot of campers today, and we have、uh, achieved over five hundred fifty billion U.S. dollars GMV sales last year, and we also have more than half billion users using our services in China alone. And every day, more than 200 million people shopping through a mobile phone on our site. And one thing you believe or not, I, I just don't understand. There are about more than 60 million people browser our 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 through a mobile phone every night without buying anything. <laughs> And、uh, we also created more than third more than 33 million jobs. This is what we feel for China. This is. What we feel most proud of. Our goal is that we've a bigger, even crazy. Which yesterday I told you, by year 2036, we try to build an economy that be the world fifth largest economy. For our GME last year, we are ranking number 21 or 22 in the world. In next 20 years, we want to be the fifth. In the fifth largest economy, we want to support two billion consumers. We want to create a hundred million jobs for the world. We want to support ten million business be profitable on our platform. This is what we want to do. And、um, by the way, there are a lot of stories about us, a lot of books telling about us. We ne- I never write a book by myself because I think when I start to buy my own, write my own autobiography, that means I'm getting old. The book I want to write about one day is about Alibaba 1001 mistakes. We made so many mistakes, and the mistakes that we learn are the best assets we have. Ah,、oh, we made all kinds of mistakes on the, on the financing, on the HR, on the marketing, and on the competition. We have a lot. I tell you one story was very interesting. It's a it's every startup at the beginning when you want to be global, you have the same thing. When we start Alibaba B two B, we want we are helping small business to selling things across the board. So we think, huh, the where, which country has the best technology on the internet? We say USA. And if we are helping international trade, international trade you need English. Which country has a very good English? USA. And which country has most of the import export business? USA. So we say, hmm. That means we should put Alibaba headquarter or at least a big office in America. So we decided to build up a huge office in San Francisco. When we arrive in San Francisco, we found something wrong because it is so difficult to hire people who know trade in the Silicon Valley, San Francisco. So we start hiring people from Miami, from New York, all arriving into San Francisco. After one month or two months, we realize something wrong. When we have like a thirty people in our Sanford in Silicon Valley office, because those people they know trade, but they don't know anything about the internet. Those people who know about the internet, they do not know anything about the trade. And the other thing frustrated us is that it was a beautiful story at that time because they say China in the daytime, U.S. in the e- evening. You are seeing the daytime, China's the evening. So people work here in the daytime, send email there, so the next day they can keep continue to work. It's a beautiful story, but did not work out. <laughs> I 
I find out, we later we find out that those people who know trade do not necessarily have to know English. Or at least their English is terrible. That's fine. People know, understand what you're talking about. We do not need English experts to do import-export. So we know something wrong, we say, we have to shut down the office. And we, I told the team, uh, the 30 people say, we're going to have shut down. You want to get a cash or you want to get an Alibaba share? If you want to get a cash, $3,000, like two or $3,000 each person. If you want to get a share, one cents, two cents per share, you get the options. Everybody say, give me cash, no shares. <laughs> they all went home happily with $3,000. So we have a lot of mistakes we made. A lot of colleagues also made mistakes. We survived. I would say we survived. We're not successful. We will never say, Ali Binan Yababa, we never say we are a successful company because we will not say success until we survive 102 years. We just finished 18 years. There are another 84 years to go. The next 84 years, anything could happen. So we will never say we're successful because every time, I think most people here, you know, have the same feeling. When you get a feeling of being successful, problem comes, <laughs> right? So I share some of the tips why we survive. First, we have to believe in the future. We have to love the jobs we do. We have to love our customers. So if you don't have the vision for the future, it's difficult for a team to have a teamwork. Do not hire people for you to work. Hire people to work for the vision you agree on together. Especially young people might advise that if you're 20 years old, please join a good company, find a good boss to learn how to, be, how to do business. If you're 30 years old, try, if you want to do something yourself, try to do something yourself. When you are 40 years old, please do something that you are strong at and good at. When you're 50 years old, Please spend time for the young people, giving chance for young people while you're still strong. When you're 60 years old, better spend time with your grandchildren on the beaches. This is generally speaking, and this is something that everything you do, you have to love it. If you do not like the things you, you know, you're doing, you are so, I mean, your life is in trouble. All right. Second is that uh, to try to build a good team. What does a good team mean? The good team does not mean you hire excellent people from Harvard or from a multinational five hot fortune, five, fortune 500 countries or uh, companies. I remember when we raised the five, first five million US dollars, we think, ha, huh, now we have money from 50 $50,000 to $5 million. So we should hire great people. We hired close to 10 excellent vice presidents for our many multinational companies. One of the guys who are the marketing expert vice president of a big company, he gave me a business plan, a marketing plan, 12 million US dollars. And I say, hey, I, we only have five million dollars. How could you give me a business plan for two, you know, for, uh, for next year's budget to marketing twelve million? He said, Jack, I never make any plan below twenty million dollars. <laughs> Hire the right people, not necessarily the best people. The best people is always you train them. Not there is no best people in the market. The best people is all for you is always you train yourself. So. As I say, if you hire the people who are very good, not suitable to you, it's just like you are putting a Boeing 747 engine into a poor tractor. Neither of them are happy. The Boeing, the engine is not happy, the poor tractor is not happy. So find the right people. And the other thing I want to say is that um, making sure that you focus on the product and services. Your vision designs what kind of people are joining you. 
but what kind of people joining you would design the product and services. As the chairman, as the CEO, as the founder of the company, you have to be sure your customers are happy with a product and service. I know nothing about a computer. I hate high technology because people like me, when we hear about high technology, we are scared. But when we want to get a government support, we tell government we are high technology. <laughs> but when we tell the consumers, users say, this is so simple. Go, so I was, for the first two years, I was the product tester of Alibaba website because I know 80% of the people in the world, of, on the business world, like me, we just want to have a dumb click, get what I want. So many of the times when the engineers design some wonderful softwares, they feel excited, and I would test it. If I cannot use it, just to throw it into the rubbish. If I can use it, I believe 80% of the people can use it. So this is, this is what I think is important. The fourth important for a startup, remember, always customer number one, employee number two, shareholder number three. If you put the, it's the customer who pay you the money. It's the employees that their creation, their innovation make the customer happy. I believe if the customer happy, employees are happy, the shareholders will be happy. I don't like Wall Street put the, put the uh, shareholder number one. When shareholder put number one, people start to cheat. Number five, as a startup, please stay focused. I find a lot of startups, they, want, they have so many dreams, they change their dreams every day. If there are nine rabbits on the ground, if you want to catch one rabbit, don't change the rabbit, change yourself, right? Remember that, nine rabbits, you have to stick to one rabbit until that rabbit, you got it. Don't change the rabbit all the time, you will get nothing. So embrace the change and change yourselves. Well, the, sec the next thing I want to share with you, I want to tell you about the world is, has changed. The world is changing very, very fast. Don't complain about the change because you complain, it changes. You don't complain, it changes. And when I was young, I don't like Bill Gates. I don't like Microsoft. I don't like Oracle because I think these guys are taking all of my jobs take all of my opportunities. When you are tiny, young, you want to compare yourself to Bill Gates, Larry Edison, you will be very disappointed. It's better for you to compare to your neighbors. How can you learn from them? Why barber, why? yeah, I went to Detroit. Past two days, I found a lot of barber shops here. I don't know why. <laughs> When you have opened a barber shop, you have to check why Mr. Wong's shop better than Tom's. There must be things inside. You have to learn. Where is the opportunity? Opportunity always exists in the place where people complain. If you can solve the complaining problems, that is the best opportunity. The world has changed, I say, we are in a very, very critical period of technology revolution. Every technology revolution, the first 50 years are critical. The first technology revolution, the first 50 years are very important. Among the first 50 years, the first 20 years are the technology. Next 30 years, about application of the technology. So in the first technology revolution, if you are if you, are, if you are the first company using the steam machines, you'll be successful. The second technology revolution, if you're the company using electricity sooner, faster, and quicker, then you will be successful. This technology revolution, if you are the company, embrace the change, see the future, change yourself, you might have a better chance. So, why I say the world is dangerous? I say the first technology caused World War I. Second technology revolution caused World War II. Now we are entering the third technology revolution. It's going to be tough if we do not fight against the same enemy, poverty, disease, environment. The, the human being is going to be big trouble. 
So we have to be sure, we have to understand the future. And the other thing is that I want to say, people don't like globalization. I am a strong believer of globalization. I'm a strong believer of, of free trade. The past 20 years, globalization was designed for big companies. In 200 years ago, globalization was controlled by few emperors and kings. In the past 20 years, globalization was controlled and manipulated by 60,000 big companies. Young people had no chance. Small business had no chance. Women had no chance. Developing countries had no chance. So, but even that, Past 20 years, the world economy grew very fast because of globalization. What if we can support 6 million, 16 million small business? They can go global. They can buy and sell. That thing will change very, very fast. So I think when the things is changing so fast, everybody here, every, all the young people have to think about this. What does this change mean? To me, to my kids, what should I change myself to meet the changes? What kind of things I should do about it? So, I recommend to many government offices, and I also would love to share this idea with many entrepreneurs here. Remember, pay special attention to next 30 years. In the past 20 years, we have a Google, we have a Amazon, we have a Facebook, we have Alibaba, we have all the, 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 the Uber, all the companies. But the next 30 years are not those pure internet company will win. Next 30 years are those company who can make use of the internet, using internet as well, those companies will win. So please pay special attention to the next 30 years. Please pay special attention to those people who are below 30 years old. Today, there are about 1.7 billion people in the world using internet. And most of those people are below 30 years. Those people who are below 30 years old, they are the internet generation. They are the generation going to change the future. Please pay attention, special attention to those companies who have less than 30 employees. Because small companies will be the future and small companies will be the companies of 21st century. I'm a strong believer of that because in the past 100 years, industry period, everything is about amount, size, standardizations. Next 30 years, the world is shifting from standardization to personalizations. So big companies is going to face huge challenges. Small guys, we have problems. But these big guys, they have a bigger problems than we have. And if you want to be a successful people and entrepreneur, remember, you need IQ, EQ, and LQ. What is LQ? LQ is Q of love. If you want to be successful, you should have EQ. Because when you have EQ, you know how to deal with people. But if you do not want to fail, you should have the IQ. IQ may not be you, your team. I, I'm not a guy that have high IQ, but my team do have very high IQ. When we have a lot of high IQ guys, they need a people like a me with good EQ things. <laughs> and I, LQ, the Q of love, is about a care for others. When you care for others, last century, the IT enable yourself. This century, the DT, the data time, data technology, is to enable the others. So when you pay special attention to next 30 years, people who are below 30 years old, company below 30 people, please also pay special attention to women. Women care for the other people much more than men. Men care for themselves more than women. One of the secret sauce for Alibaba is that we have more than 48% of the, of the people in the company, we, they are women. We have more than 33% of the senior management are women. 
women is going to be very powerful in 21st century because last century people compare about the muscle. This century people compare about the wisdom, about the user friendliness. So I'm very happy these days. I see a lot of women entrepreneurs here, especially on the internet. People really don't care your man or woman. They care whether you serve people better or not, whether you care people better or not. So pay special attention, hire as many women as possible. This is what we did in our com company, and this is the secret sauce I want to share with you. <laughs> the, the other thing I want to say, please rediscover China. Before I talk about China, I want to show you a short video, just a few seconds, to see how China changed in the past 30 years. This is Shanghai today, 1990, less than 30 years ago. Shanghai was nothing, just a piece of, you know, a farmland. But within 30 years, China made city like Shanghai like this. We have a lot of cities like that developing the past 30 years, grow so tremendously. When we came here, people prepared some videos I asked a lot of Americans, what do you think about China? Think, mm, panda, bicycles, great walls, Tai Chi. I say, no, these things. <laughs> China has changed. We from nobody today become the second largest economy of the world. Thanks to the globalization. Thanks to America. Thanks to Europe. Thanks to the the people's hard working and partnership. 1972, when Nixon and Mao Zedong signed an agreement, opened the chapter of a political partnership between China and the USA. China did grow very fast. People like me, I was born in Hangzhou, the city where Nixon visited in 1972. I was like eight years old. Because of that, Hangzhou become an open city. Because of that, we have a lot of American tourists to come to Hangzhou. I start to learn English, giving free tour to those American visitors. And I learned to think different because everything I learned from the books are so different from the things I heard from the American visitors. I know there's a world that is totally different than the other side of the world. In the past 30 years, China embraced the change. In the past 30 years, China took the decision to open and to reform. In the past 30 years, China opened globalization, which today, I think globalization was the name created by Americans. But today, the Americans don't like the globalization. We start to like it. And China also embrace the internet. If America was a country on wheels, China today is a country on the internet or on the mobile phones. And China started to learn from America in the past of the years. We learn from America, we learn from Europe, we learn from America with great appreciation. People like me, I never got one tra day trained in America, but I believe I know much about American than most of the Chinese, maybe more than some of the Americans. I respect the culture. We learn today in China, in Beijing, Shanghai, or Guangzhou, big cities, when you pick up 100 young people, you will find 80 of them can speak as, at least 50 English words. 
If you go to Washington, New York, San Francisco, if you pick up 100 young people in, in America, how many of them can speak more than 10 Chinese words, except from Xie Xie? <laughs> when you learn, when you embrace the change, you have the chance. People start to complain about globalization. I think globalization, nobody can stop it. It will continue to do. The only thing is that how you can change yourself to embrace it. And our China manufacturing is going good. It's doing pretty good in the past 30 years because the Chinese manufacturer study American consumers. They try to make sure the American, European, the global consumers love their products. This is China has changed. But I think America is a great country. American dreams, the Alibaba dream was get from the American dreams, 1985. I learned so much. I read so many books. I read the, the GE way. I understand the eBay. I understand the IBM. All the things we tried to learn. And next to 30 years, China is going to be much faster grow. Past the 30 years, American economy was the engine of the global economy. I believe the next 30 years, America still will be the leading economy engine of the global economy. But China is going to be another big engine for the global economy. China is shifting from exporting to importing. We have 1.4 billion people. We have more than 300 million middle class. You know how many people traveling, Chinese people traveling around the world every year? Last year, nearly 150 million Chinese people traveling outside China. 150 million people. This is a movie nation around the world. And in the next 10, 15 years, China is going to have 500 to 600 million middle class. The demanding for high quality products, high service products is huge. And I would say that, think about what does that mean? Well, before I, you know, how many cities in America has more than one million population? You know any idea? 10. How many cities in China has more than one million population? A hundred and a two. One million population in China is like a village, but in America it's a big city. <laughs> My city has only 8.6 million people. It's ranking nothing in China. But the demanding population, middle class, means so much. Imagine. The Chinese government announced that in the next five years, they are going to import 8 trillion U.S. dollars. What does 8 trillion U.S. dollars mean? I think China will import much more than 8 trillion, at least 10 trillion U.S. dollars in the next five years. You know how many pigs China eat every year? 600 million pigs a year. Luckily, Human beings are eating pigs, not a pig eating human beings. <laughs> 600 million pigs. How many chickens we eat? 7 billion chickens a year. So the numbers are scary. But what does that mean? That means past 30 years, the American population, middle class, they changed the whole world economy. Next 30 years, the China, the growing market, they are going to fundamentally change the landscape of the economy. China is going to buy a lot of things because if we do not start to buy good products, China is going to be a much more polluted country. We have terrible air, we have terrible soil, we have terrible water. If we do not learn to buy things, we are going to be in big trouble. So eight trillion dollars means that the, due to the number of last year's American exportation to China takes about 70 years to build, to, 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 to manufacture. So this is what we see. China is going to be the world largest consumption places 
and that engine is going to drive the world economy. But the other thing, what does that mean to SME? I think this is a good opportunity for small business. In the past years, big companies of America are already all over China, all over the world. So in China, you see almost all the big American companies there. But we need more small business. The next amount of importing to China, export to China, this opportunity belongs to small business. I'm encouraging all the government should set special free trade zones for small business. Because <laughs> we have, every country said small business is important. Every country knows small companies are the driver of employment. Everybody, everybody knows small business is so good, but not every government really set a rules. All the free trade zones are designed for big companies. Big companies can go import, export, receive money quickly. Small business never got this chance. Farmers never got this chance. So next 20 years, let's build up a system specifically setting for small business. And this is why I'm flying all around the world. Last year, 870 hours met, meeting more than 40 government senior leaders. And this year, I'm going to fly more than 1,000 hours. Continue to evangelize, because if we believe it, we have to make it happen. So, please view China as an opportunity. I'm so happy about President Xi Jinping and President Donald Trump, the wonderful dialogue they had. Because the two markets, if they connected, 30 years ago, American did help China a lot. Next to 30 years, China market need a lot of American small products, a lot of products. And made in America, the products, the quality, the service. You guys here, I visited the, the booth. Beautiful products. We Chinese consumers are crazy about that. We need that. So, how can you do business with China? First, doing business is never easy. Don't tell me today doing business is more difficult. Never be easy. But today, you should, in the, in the past 20 years, doing business for import export, you go to the trade shows. Now, you have to move in online. As I said, China has become a country on the internet, on the mobile phones. And we company, our company, we, our sales last year is 12, is 11% of the total China retail online and offline combined together. And I tell you that November 11, that is the singlest day we created for the world, for the consumers. Last year, uh, one day alone, we sold 17.8 billion US dollars. And a few days ago, June 18th, we sold 2 million lipsticks with less than 10 minutes. So everything goes on so quick and fast. And last, uh, two days ago, we sold 200 tons of milk powder within less than five minutes. So people start to shopping online. As I said, 200 million people start to shopping through mobile phone every day. And we are delivering for our company alone. We are helping delivering over 60 million packages per day, which we foresee that in 10 years, the world in China, the logistics company will deliver at least 1 billion packages per day. So this is how the world changed. Doing business, if you're using the traditional way, I don't think it will work. If you're using the internet, there's a better way. For, take, for example, Indian, the government, Indian government said, Jack, we want to make 50% or 60% of the Indian people have a bank account. My suggestion is that if you're using the traditional banking system, it won't work. So we give our technology mobile payment. Less than two years, we have 250 million Indian people using mobile payment today that in, the, in, in Asia. So think about internet 
is the opportunity for small business. Do not think about the internet is just e-commerce. Think about internet e-business. It, it's better. Do not think only think about a sell. You should find you design or let some people in France design. Let people in China manufacture it. Let some people in the in the in the in the Africa to get the raw materials. So small business. Remember, past twenty years, only multinational companies are able to have this kind of international business ecosystem. Today, with the internet, we are able to do this, and it's the opportunity. Everything a big companies can do in the past twenty years today, small business can do it. In the past twenty years, big companies. They have all the money to do the IT. They have the, all the money. Have a lot of office around the world. Today, small business using internet, e-business, you can do things the same in a very cost-effective way. Last, I want to share with you is global buy, global sell is going to be happen in next ten years. So think about. Anybody in America, if you want to buy things online, you know, buy a salmon in Norway, you want to buy uh, some uh, coconuts in in Thailand, within 72 hours you will receive it. Our goal is trying to making sure that in next 10 years, anywhere, anybody in the world, if you place an order online, within 72 hours you will receive it. And we were making sure the government will try to make policies for small business to import and export freely and easily. People may not believe it. I tell you, two years, three years ago, the Prime Minister of Canada, he came to my of, our office and say, "Hey, Alibaba, can you help us selling some、uh, Canadian seafood?" I say, "What seafood?" Some people say, "Lobster." So we tried to sell lobster on November 11 that year. For a one day, we sold 97,000 live lobsters within 72 hours from Canada to China families, and almost three weeks there is no lobster in Canada market. <laughs> the first time. We helped the American farmers selling the cher Washington State cherries. Was funny because at the the the、uh, the U.S. ambassador to China came to us and said, "Can you help us to sell the cherries?" We said, "Yeah." So we placed the order online, and the cherries stood on the trees. When we got the cherries, when we get the orders, people start to pick up the cherries and deliver. Within 72 hours, cherries were picked, sent to China. Distribute into eighty thousand families, and funny thing is that we got a lot of complaints. Next few days, the complaint was such a great, such great cherries, such great price. Why we cannot buy it? So they want to buy more. So I think the demand is huge when you got one point four billion people. You probably cannot. You only have three hundred million people. One point four. Oh my God, that's a lot of people. And doing business is never easy. Try to learn. It's not that difficult to do e-commerce. If Jack Ma can do e-commerce, you definitely can do it. I'm for sure. A good thing is that today we are using mobile phones. We are not using computer. Computer is very complicated. Mobile phone buy and sell is easier. We hope one day with a mobile phone, if you have, if you plant potatoes, you can sell potatoes to anywhere in the world. With mobile phones, if you have, if if you have a car, you can book Uber anywhere. So this is what we envision in next twenty years. China, internet, e-commerce, e-business partner will be everywhere, and people always scared. Is that is will you be cheated, or is that anything that、uh, scare me? Small business, you have nothing to lose. Don't worry about.、It. The only thing you worry about is lose the opportunity. If you losing China, if you losing developing country in Asia, if you losing the internet e-commerce, you will lose the hope, lose the future. Marco Polo, one thousand years ago, he came to China. It took him. Eight years 
to walk from Europe to China, and from China to Europe, another eight years. Today, eight seconds. You can go to China a hundred million times because internet. At that time, Marco Polo came to China. There are a lot of, uh, you know, terrible things happen on the way. Today, there's nothing that has happened. So, please catch up this opportunity. The th the thing I want to tell you here is that don't miss this chance. This chance is going to be changed, and I think most of the small business will be globalized. If you are not a globalized business, small business, you will out of business. I'm not scaring you guys because you have to think out of the box. You have to do business. Because you're small, you are unique. Because you're small, it's difficult for you to compete locally. Because if you use the internet, you can compete globally. So don't miss opportunity, catch the opportunity. What Alibaba want to do is we want to build up the platform. We want to enable you with the, with the com finding consumers, enable you finding the business partners, enable you to solve the money receiving problems, the, the, the payment problems, and logistic problems, and computing capability problems. But don't, re don't say, oh, does that mean I have to use Alibaba? No, not necessarily. Using any internet services, any e-commerce company that can help you to sell your things outside. Do not think, oh, well, should I rely on Alibaba? Rely on any e-commerce internet companies that you think it is helpful to you. So, but we commit that we will do a bad job. Finally, let's talk to our young people. The artificial intelligence is coming. And it's robots is going to replace a lot of jobs. But I'm a, belie I'm a belief that 30 years later, this new technology is going to create more jobs than today. Every technology revolution comes, they kill jobs. And then 30 years later, those people who understand technology, who change themselves, they start to make more jobs. So pay attention to the kids' education. Machine is going to be smarter. But human beings are always wiser. So try to teach your kids to be more creative, to be more innovative, because only those people who are creative, innovative, then they can survive. And let our kids spend more time on doing e-commerce, because doing e-commerce is about respect the other culture. Doing e-commerce is about a communication. Spending more time on doing business online rather than only on chat box and on emails. By the way, I have a one thing I noticed. It is so difficult to convince successful people. One of the reasons why Alibaba succeed, because 10 years ago, we focus on those young people who are 18 years old, 20 years old, because they are not successful. If we help them, Spending time with them for 10 years, they will be successful. But those people who are very successful, they will give you 100 reasons why we should not take this of new innovations. So spending time on the future and making sure that generation, I noticed that many American senior people, they spend a lot of time on sending, receive emails, young people using the WeChat and, and chat on the mobile phones. This is the generation change. So the generation change is going to be scary. Let's make it up. And also, please use the internet. Please trade, do business with China. Please learn and find the people who are smart than you are. Thank you very, very much. Okay, Jack, I know I'm not Charlie Rose, but I want to ask you a couple quick questions, if that's okay. You're not done yet. Um, you've got thousands of business owners in this audience, thousands of entrepreneurs. What do you want them to take away from this experience? Yeah, don't miss the opportunity. 
I think the next 30 years is the opportunity for people like us. The, the big companies, they have to looking for a way to survive. But we have to look a way to, to expand our business, to find more partners. And I think China is the best opportunity. Internet is the best opportunity. Don't miss it. This is what I want to say. Just try to learn. Just like when I open the internet, my friend in Seattle say, Jack, just to type in the word, it's not a bomb. So go do business. And I'm dying to know what's next for Jack Ma. Um, I would go back to teach. Um, At Harvard? <laughs> they will be begging, I'm sure. I, I think that uh, I would go back to teach uh, in the entrepreneur schools share with them the 1,001 mistakes. Um, and I also would love to spend more time on the, uh, the things I like, the environment protection, all these things. Because I don't think uh, um, next to five years I'll be strong, or 10 years I'll be strong enough to operate, to govern such a big economy. We should leave in more opportunities for young people. And uh, I think the world belongs to the young people. The world belongs to those people below 30 years old a company who are below 30 employees. So I want, um, I want to do the things that I'm good at, that is uh, being a teacher. Well, we're glad that you didn't make it into the police department or KFC. Uh, and we thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and giving us an opportunity to learn about how to do business in China. Thank you so much, Jack Ma, for this event. Thank you very much. Thank you.